Store closures, bankruptcies and plummeting consumer sentiment have hit staple American retailers over the past year. Let's paint a picture of the damage so far. Just a few weeks ago, Bed Bath & Beyond stripped down its big blue signs and announced the closure of 400 stores across the country. During this time, Walmart made headlines by closing several stores in Chicago, while Nordstrom shuttered its stores in San Francisco. The closures coming amid a flurry of bankruptcy announcements, including Party City and David's Bridal. So what does the picture actually look like now for commercial real estate? We're joined by James Cook, JLL America's Director of Research for Retail, to discuss this more. Thank you for joining us this morning. So. People are always talking about sort of the death of commercial real estate, especially in light of what happened with the, with the banking crisis and some of these tighter lending conditions. Give us the truth here. What is actually happening with commercial real estate? Oh, my gosh. There's such a negative sentiment out there. And the truth, I track the data, is actually quite different. Um, we are seeing historic low vacancies in commercial real estate, um, in retail real estate right now. And what happened is after the last Great Recession, uh, developers stopped building much new retail real estate. So basically, new retail construction fell off a cliff around 2009, and we've had steady demand by occupiers wanting to lease more retail space and a limited supply. So to this point now, we're at the lowest vacancy that we've ever seen historically. I mean, it's... There's just not much out there. And you talk to the occupiers that are expanding right now, especially you were talking about Shake Shack, folks that are looking for, for good drive through locations. It is really slim pickings out there. So then, as you mentioned that we didn't see a lot of the sort of new retail construction since the great financial crisis and then enter Bed Bath & Beyond here to really shake this up. So, I mean, assuming that these the auction of these locations is approved by the bankruptcy court, what does this mean then for pricing in the commercial real estate space? Uh, I don't think it's going to affect pricing. If we're talking about pricing from an in in investor perspective, I don't think it's going to affect pricing that much, honestly. Um, because the Bed Bath & Beyond spaces, those are ripe for releasing by new tenants. There's multiple tenants out there that are looking for that space. Bed Bath & Beyond was mostly in open air, what we'd call, you know, power center or, you know, community centers, which are places that, especially since the pandemic, these daily needs shopping centers are the exact kind of places that everybody wants, all retailers want to lease space at right now. So the demand is really there um, and Bed Bath, you know, going out of business, it's more of an anomaly than a representation of what's going on for retail tenants right now. Because especially when you look at some of the growth plans for like a, a TJ Maxx, Dollar General, they, like they're growing their expansion plans. And when you keep in mind the size of some of these Bed Bath & Beyond locations, I mean, some of them range from 18,000 square feet to 92,000 for Bed Bath and & Beyond and between 14,000 and 63,000 for the Bye Bye Baby one. So in terms of who's really primed to take advantage of this, are there certain retailers better positioned right now? Absolutely. So the categories that are expanding right now, um, include value retailers like, you know, Burlington, um, uh, Ross Dress for Less, TJX, you know, Marshalls, those kind of retailers. Um, they're perfect to release that Bed Bath & Beyond space. So um, not to mention there's a bunch of like regional players that are expanding as well. Um, you know, yeah, there's definitely going to be demand. And in terms of what this does to the sort of the tenant mix when it comes to these spaces, I mean, I've heard everything from, you know, new office space to pickleball courts going up there. But what are your expectations as to how the, really this grows from here and what they do with these spaces? OK, so it is true that there are some pickleball courts that are going into, say, you know, a former big box location. But for the most part, the vast majority of releasing for this vacant retail, I don't think it's going to be as fun and funky as, as that, as I would hope. You know, that's what I would want to <laughs> see. But again, it's a lot of, you know, the folks that are expanding right now. Um, it's value retail. So it might be like I mentioned a TJ Maxx. It also could be value grocery. So an Aldi uh, or a grocery outlet. And then, uh, of course, the other big category that's expanding is quick service restaurant, you know, the fast food. They're still expanding. And so then how do you sort of 
play that with what we've seen with that consumer sentiment survey that came out. And really, there's also this rising consumer debt that we're seeing as well, hitting some record levels. As, we, as people sort of pour into these, these leases while looking at some of these consumer trends, where do you think the next level of growth is going to be coming from, especially as we have some of these, you know, still seeing these recession signals flashing? Yeah, well, now is a time for retailers who are who have a value proposition to really do well. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, your super centers, your targets, your Walmarts, places like that. Um, any folks uh, that seem to offer some kind of value. So that's where that that fast food comes into play, um, because that can be an ex inexpensive way, uh, an alternative to doing maybe more an expensive meal on a Friday night, you know, do a family takeout uh, at home or something like that. So, you know, recessions are always, well, sorry to use the R word there, but uh, headwinds in the economy uh, and negative consumer sentiment are always great times for value retailers to kind of um, grow some market share from consumers that are trading down, especially middle class consumers that are saying, ah, you know what, this weekend, you know, we're not going to go to the fancy department store. We're just going to go down the street to the super center. And so then when you also look at consumer spending on services, how does that play into your outlook here? Oh, yeah, that's a great point. So the other big consumer trend that we're seeing right now is so going back a few years, the pandemic, people just stopped buying, you know, services because, you know, you were just stuck at home and everybody was buying TVs and, you know, all these home goods and, you know, all the things to improve their home. Now that trend is reversing itself. And people are spending money on experiences again, and not as much on not as much on electronics and home items and things like that. So this is actually an opportunity for another trend that I'm really deep into researching right now, which is the ticketed experiences. Um, and so that could be like um, indoor mini golf from Puttery and Putt Shack. We've got dark concepts. My team identified over 9 million square feet of new entertainment concepts that are going to be expanding within the next one to two years. So there's obviously an expectation that the, the trend of spending money on experience is, is going to be growing in, in spite of the headwinds of the economy. I love that. I've been seeing a lot of these sort of indoor golf slash restaurants as well. And they're, you, they're always jam packed. So clearly there's something there to keep an eye on. Yeah. A big thank you there to James Cook, JLL America's Director of Research for Retail. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you.